Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today we have a resistance transport preview, and this might not come as that much of a surprise to a lot of you, considering the resistance transport's already out and has been out for a little while, uh, at least in Australia and reportedly even in some Barnes and Noble stores. So, yeah, this whole wave four thing has been kind of a crazy, crazy situation where it wasn't supposed to come out but it was but then they said no it's not but not everybody got the memo so then it came out on june 6th this article even said june 6th was the release date like for the first few minutes until they edited it and changed it so just crazy stuff but we're going to take a look at it uh this may not have a whole lot of spoilers for some of you if you have already seen some of the unboxings and stuff that have that have happened but if not i'm just going to go through the article because that's kind of what i do and uh, so the first thing we're going to get to look at is the two dials. One of the things you're really going to notice is there's a lot of red on these dials. And that is going to really be a prominent theme for a lot of what's going on here. Specifically with the transport model, you're also going to be getting uh, the little cockpit module as well. Which actually makes this a very cool expansion because you're getting two ships in a single expansion. Granted, it's a more expensive expansion, so you're kind of paying for it. So it's really up to you whether or not the value is totally there. But if you do plan to play both of them, then this is a slightly better value. However, you're not really supposed to be able to use them both independently. The idea here is you, like, you couldn't use both of them in the same game. Now, granted, if you've got a spare base and pegs, you can totally just put that little cockpit on there. But I believe if you were playing in, like, say, Worlds or something like that, you would probably have to have the cockpit attached to the full transport module because I don't think they really want you flying the, the transport module without the cockpit attached because then it's not the miniature. Uh, but let's, let's be real here. It, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. It probably doesn't matter to a lot of folks. But I think if you're playing a high-profile event, you do have to have the model that actually matches the silhouette and by taking a piece off you know whatever I, it's not really a big deal but i'm mean, curious like let me know in the comments below do you think that like if somebody showed up to worlds and they had let's say there were somebody that was very much on a budget and just managed to make it to worlds and budget was a factor and, and they only had one of these expansions but they wanted to fly a list that had both well granted they're gonna have both dials they're gonna have both cardboard bases i'm sure they have a spare peg and 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 uh, you know plastic base from something else and so they show up with you know uh, a cockpit and the transport as two separate ships but they don't have the cockpit in the transport one you know do you think that they would get disqualified for that i i i'm sure somebody would be cool enough to like at least loan them the piece if that were the case but i'm just curious how you know how strict the community as at large would be i think people would be pretty cool with that all right so let's go take a look at what we do have here so I'm going to look at the actual resistance transport first. Uh, we have focus, target lock. We have the red coordinate and the red jam. We've got two front arc, one agility, five hull and three shields. This is very reminiscent of the original B-Wing without the firepower. Uh, we don't have barrel roll, so it's not as maneuverable. It's definitely a different ship. But I think the it was originally said when Episode 7 first came out that this ship was kind of rebuilt either from old B-Wing pieces or inspired by the B-Wing design because there's definitely a, a relationship there uh, while it's still not appearing to be a B-Wing. It's definitely not a B-Wing. That cockpit isn't exactly a gyroscopic. It's definitely flying flat as opposed to flying, you know, spinning around uh, all sorts of ways, especially if, you know, the centerpiece opens up and Leia's going to like walk off in the, you know, at the end of or middle of episode seven. Now she's not spinning around upside down uh, like all loosey-goosey in there. But it's a cool looking uh, ship. I like it because I like the B-Wing and I'm happy to finally have it. I thought we were actually going to get this one much sooner in the life cycle of the game. But that's where it is. Uh, so for some of our named pilots, we've got Kova Nell, who is Initiative 4, which is actually moderately high. Uh, who has a really cool ability. It, while you defend or perform a primary attack, if your revealed maneuver is red, again, remember, there's a lot of red on these dials, you're going to get to roll an additional die. Now, the cool thing is your revealed maneuver is going to stay your revealed maneuver for the whole time. We talked about this in some of the other article previews where, you know, a ship's revealed maneuver is going to be very, very important for the duration of the whole round. So it's very important that we get out of habits 
that are where you reveal a dial and then just set it to the side. It doesn't matter after that. That was like a 1.0 thing that sometimes would happen. Now it's a lot more important that we, when we reveal a dial, we do place it on the corresponding ship card and kind of keep it relevant and don't mess with it because it's going to be relevant throughout the rest of the round. Uh, and here's a perfect case for that. If what you revealed was red, you're going to roll an extra die. And there's going to be a lot of other upgrade cards that are going to interact with this ability as well. This is actually going to be a very effective pilot for this one as far as combat effectiveness. Because what this is going to do, <clears throat> if you're able to, because there's a lot of red on that tile, this is going to make this particular pilot have effectively a three primary attack and two agility with five hull and three shields, which is really not half bad. Not half bad at all considering all the other stuff you're going to get you're going to get you know cannons and you're going to get the crew um you know we don't know exactly what all upgrades you're going to have here but we know at least cannons and crew and modification you know so um we've got pamich nero good i don't know if i'm saying that right but uh, yes um well you have two or fewer stress tokens you may execute red maneuvers even while stressed again Lots of red maneuvers. This is going to work as well because we are going to see some things that are going to be able to clear multiple stress as well. So this is somebody that's just able to just do whatever they want as far as maneuvers go. But not necessarily actions, but at least giving you extra flexibility. We've got Nodin Chavdri. Chavdri. And what's cool about this one too is that this is definitely like you're seeing dudes on the ground here. This almost looks like a legion uh, picture. You know, because like, look, I love that when you see artwork too, that you're getting you know artwork that you can definitely see being used in other games. And if Legion, you know, does have that long future plan where they're maybe gonna do sequel stuff at some point, this is you know just a great setting for a card that we might see in Legion someday because you got definitely a ground battle going on here. Very very cool. Uh, initiative two, uh, after you coordinate or are coordinated. If you have two or fewer stress tokens, you may perform one action on your action bar as a red action, even if you are stressed. This is kind of cool because this is going to allow you to chain a coordinate, perhaps, or you know, just or just just you know, give you some cool stuff. Again, you're going to have a lot of stress at the end of this if you're really kind of maxing this out, and this will make a little bit more difference when we see some of the other cards that are coming up. Uh, now, for the module, we've got Vimerati. Vimerati is actually a cool. Like, I love, I love, I love so much about this artwork. But Vimerati is a cool character because Vimerati is one of those characters that's branching out into a lot of different things. Vimerati is kind of like the main, I guess, the main protagonist in the Phasma novel. Uh, and while I was not a big fan of the book as a whole, there were things I liked about it. Um, but Vimerati is basically this resistance spy that gets captured by a Captain Cardinal who is a cool character, because he's actually like a good uh, person that's on working for the First Order. And they interrogate, and they have this whole A Thousand and One Arabian Nights style discussion about Captain Phasma. Um, so Vimerati is this resistance spy, and Vimerati is also mentioned in other things, like she is at Galaxy's Edge, the theme park, and you will see Vimerati running around um, you know, getting into antics and adventures and stuff and like little shows and stuff and Galaxy's Edge. So Vimerati is and now in X Wing. So I like when they take characters from from a book and then they start putting them into all different stuff, especially with the new canon and a lot of the newer characters. So that's cool. Now initiative one. Um, but she has after placing forces assign the compromising intel condition to one enemy ship. So she's basically a spy going after one person. And I just I love this artwork too. I don't know if that Art, there is another First Order ship, uh, or if that is the, basically the, uh, the the ship that Han Solo had uh, in Episode 7. It looks like it's probably Han Solo's ship from Episode 7, or at least that class. But I love seeing more capital ships in my artwork, too. Uh, so the compromising intel, this is what Vi is going to put on somebody. Uh, during the system phase, if she's at range 0 to 3, flip your dial face up. So we're all going to know. If she stays close to you, we're all going to know what she you know what you're doing so that's kind of cool and while you defend or perform an attack against Vimerati you cannot spend defense or focus tokens so it's like you know she's going up against like a Poe Dameron or something like that you know like oh we don't care that you're high initiative we're gonna know where you're going and you know you're not gonna be able to spend focus token like that's pretty cool 
And and, and if you ever do like multiplayer games too, if there's lots of five Marathis, that's gonna hurt you because they're all gonna be enemy five Marathis. Of course, this is balanced and you know designed for a two-player game. But that, I just thought of that like that'd be really cool for like if you're doing a six-player game and everybody's running Vimerati this card and everybody's running this, it'd be nuts. Um, we've got BB-8, another droid too. And one of the things the article points out is that you know we're getting this droid, we're getting other droids out there, and this is going to let the Resistance C-3PO be a little more effective because he wants to interact with other uh, other people who have Calculate. Um, so during the system phase, you may perform a red barrel roll or boost action. Very interesting. So a little bit of flexibility there. Uh, and, 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 the, and the you know the transport pod is one shield two 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 three one. All right, it's not it's not that great. You're gonna have uh, a focus or a cord or, or a calculate respectively. Red target lock, red barrel roll, red jam. Not a good ship. It's hard for me to really pass judgment on this until the points come out, which is another problem with my fundamental problem with X-Wing 2.0, having all digital points. Like, I'm okay with digital points, but I would also really like to have printed points on the cards because of things like, oh, it's out everywhere in the... Well, not everywhere, but it's out in a lot of places and nobody can play with it until they decide to release the points. What happens if FFG's servers go down and they just say, oh, you know what, well, I guess we're not going to release the points. And then you got all this product that nobody can use. I mean, you can probably just guess and just kind of make stuff up. Or or I, I wouldn't be surprised if a format came out someday where you're just like, you know, we're going to put whatever upgrades we want on these ships and go. Or, or something inspired by that mentality of just saying, you know what, who cares about points? Let's just build what's fun and try to, you know, try to have fun playing it. I, I, I don't think that will actually happen, but... I don't know, maybe there's like a way we could do like a Mario Kart, like, a, like there was a Mario Kart thing for a little while, we even played like a Hunger Games, where ships could just get any upgrade, um, but at great risk, you know, you have to fly over them and they're in the middle of the board, and you know, so, yeah, that's like all you could really do, right, without the points, because it's, it's just hard to know how good this ship is going to be without knowing what it's going to cost. Uh, we've got Finn, he's Initiative 2, while you defend or perform an attack, you may add a blank result, or... You may gain a strain token to add a focus result instead. Of course, I don't know if you want. You know, if you're only going to get shot once, then sure, take the strain token. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure how for, much I feel about Finn. Finn is going to need like a little bit more, a little bit more going on. But it's okay. Finn's all right. Rose Tycho. I think it's actually a lot of people are saying Tico. I, I've always said Tycho. I gotta go watch Last Jedi again to see uh, to see like how I, I'm pretty sure it's Tycho, but uh, so many people say Tico, and I just don't like Tico. I don't think I don't think that's a real last name. I think it's Tycho. Initiative three: While you defend or perform an attack, you may re-roll up to one of your results for each other friendly ship in the attack arc, which is nice. Uh, except he's just two two, so you know it's like there's kind of like a hard cap on just how effective that ability can be for her. Um, of course, unless, you know, she's able to take some kind of missiles or something like that. Uh, and then, in which case, that could potentially be better. But I'm guessing she probably won't have that. Um, now, on to the superstar, Leia, right? Now, like, Leia's strong for the Rebels. We're getting new points here pretty soon. But Leia for the Resistance is maybe even better, but justifiably so, seems to have more of an opportunity cost because she re requires two crew. So it's like really restricting where she can go, um, and and I love I love her I love her. After a friendly ship reveals its dial, you may spend a force. If you do, the chosen ship reduces the difficulty of that maneuver. Like I want to put her on the Falcon with Ray. It'd be really cool because you could do a lot of cool stuff that way. Uh, but we also don't know what she's going to cost. If she's like two points like the other Leia, then maybe it works because she's using two crew slots, right? I don't think she'll be two points, though. I think the fact that she's also giving you a force and also giving you a purple coordinate and also giving you an ability that gives you more control because it's now not restricted to once every three turns. Now you can just, you know, like this is going to work really well with, for example, the, the all your red maneuvers on your rebel transport, right? Or resistance transport. I keep, I'm going to keep saying rebel transport accidentally, and I don't mean that. I don't mean rebel transport because that's a GR-75, and that's much too big. 
At least we don't even have epic rules yet. When's the epic article coming out? I'm way off topic now. Let's get back on topic. Um, Corsella. Now, Corsella was barely in episode 7. Like, you saw her for like one second. She was much bigger in the books. I believe she was also more heavily prominently featured in a whole bunch of of deleted scenes that never made it into episode 7. I would love to see those someday. I don't think we ever will because a lot of that footage is probably going to make it into episode 9 minus the Corsella stuff. So basically Corsella was Leia's insider, Leia's buddy, Leia's friend who stayed on the inside of the New Republic when Leia was ousted and you learn a lot of this from Bloodlines, the novel. Again, more it's hard to call her a book character because she was in the movie, but she was very she's now she's more of a book character. So she's cool. Um, after you fully execute a blue maneuver, remove all of your stress tokens. So this is like some of those pilots that we're talking about that can get multiple stress. They can do things even while stressed. That's going to give them even more stress. You're more likely to see a, a ship that's got like three stress tokens. Now all of a sudden one blue maneuver clears them all. Awesome. Awesome synergy with the resistance transport. Amelin Holdo. By the way, before we look at any of this text, look at this art. It's Gorgeous. That looks like a movie still right there. That's a really, really great paint job on this on this piece of art. Honestly, it's it's gorgeous. I, I don't think these artists, whatever FFG you're paying your artists, it's not enough. Double it because, like, seriously, it's just amazing artwork. I, I, and so much of this stuff is amazing. And I'm I'm not just saying like this one. I'm singling this one out because this one really struck me as visually impressive, but. All of this art is just magnificent, and, I, and so my hat is off to all of you artists out there make, that are taking commissions for FFG and submitting this fantastic material and making our games just that much more beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would love to see FFG release an art book someday because I would be all over that. Um, before you engage, you may choose another friendly ship at range 1 to 2. You may transfer to that ship one token of a type the ship does not have. That ship may transfer one token of a type you do not have. So basically, you, guys, you can you can play flippity floppity with the tokens. Flippity floppity floop. I feel like DJ right there. Um, it allows you to do a lot of a lot of different strategies. I think this one will be very very interesting. You know, once it's actually played and once we see the point value of it, I, I expect this to be a cheaper card just because it's requiring so much setup uh, to to really become incredibly great. But I think trying to look at the max use case of it, whereas they have something that you need and you have something that they need and flip-flops that is perfect, may not be the best actual play scenario of this. It may certainly be a case where you don't have to do both of them because they're both there's a period separating both lines. You might just do one of the two and opt out of the second. So it may just be that you transfer a focus to somebody else and you don't have to take anything from them. Maybe you're just existing to buff somebody else. Maybe if you just put her on the little transport, you know, the the, the, the cockpit pod, uh, and then she's like, you're running her really cheap to just buff up your heavy hitters, that might be a better way to do it. You know, that's possible. Um, but this has a lot of potential to combo with other things. Maybe something's giving out evades to a lot of people more than you need and she does that. You know, there's a lot of potential here, but, you know, the card is, on its own isn't, like, super great, but that artwork is just phenomenal. Angled Deflectors is a really cool one. And, I, again, awesome, awesome, awesome artwork. Look at this tie. He's just like, yeah, my cockpit's blown up. I got it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this. I'm going to fix this. That's that's just so great. What a great concept for that for that shot. Uh, so you can only put this on a small or medium ship that has shield value of one or more. And it's going to reduce your shields. You're going to have one less shield, but you're going to have reinforce. So now you can... If it's, this is great for that ship that's going to have lots of shots incoming. Just put this on your front. Boom. All those shots coming in my front. You know, you, you, so you're going to lose one shield off the bat, but you're going to, it's going to make up for it in the long run. Definitely. Very cool. I'm curious what this is going to cost. I have a feeling this is going to have one of those variable costs. Uh, Larma Daisy. Daisy? I don't think it's Larma Daisy. I think it's Larma Daisy. I don't know. Like, let, let me know how you think this is pronounced in the comments below. Is it is there like a little bit of a... Or is it maybe D-A-C? D-A-C would be kind of cool too. Like, oh, she's the ace killer. Like, D-A-C. I will D-A-C-ify your whole squad. Right? Except that's not really... I mean, I mean kind of. Because she's kind of giving the jam stuff out there, right? So, like... If you kind of jam an ace, are you de-acing the eight? 
All right, so here's what she does. While you have two or fewer stress tokens, you can perform reinforce, coordinate, and jam actions even while stressed. This is factoring in to what we're looking at with the Rebel Transport, with all of the red maneuvers that are probably gonna have stress, the red actions, we have jam. Now, not all of them have the reinforce, but you can get that with the new mod, right? So, and while you perform a white version of those actions, if you are stressed, you can treat that action as red. Um, so again, so you're again, this factors into the other stuff we're talking about where you're gonna be just building up lots of stress. So that's why I think being able to just clear all of your stress after a single blue action is gonna be very, very nice. We've got some weirder looking droids here. This one I think was from episode seven. We're seeing a lot of stuff from episode seven, but there was a lot of eye candy to see in seven. Uh, PZ4CO gives you coordinate. I mean, calculate slip of the tongue there gives you calculate resistance only at the end of the activation phase you may choose one friendly ship at range one to two if you do transfer a calculate token to that ship if your revealed maneuver is blue you may transfer a focus token instead so this is kind of one of those things it's like this is kind of like doing what holdo was kind of trying to do um i i, I have a feeling this will be maybe a little cheaper than holdo uh, possibly be just because of the fact that, you know, it's doing half of what she did because she can also then pull, you know, so, I, but at the same time, this also does give you calculate. So they might be similar in cost. I don't know. We'll see. And we've got Kate O'Connick's. I love her pose here. Although she looks a little bit evil, right? She looks like, she's like, I said, go faster. Did I stutter? You know, like, like that should be the caption. Did I stutter? Kate O'Connix, one of my favorite characters from the sequel trilogy. Uh, you know, it's Leia's daughter in real life, and so I think she's gonna... I, I, I expect her to have a much larger presence in Episode Nine, and to possibly even show up in future films if they do involve a future past Episode Nine in the existing galaxy. Uh, it'd be awesome to see her as like a future new, new, new Republic leader. Would like that very much. After you reveal your dial... You may set your dial to a basic maneuver of the next higher speed while you execute that maneuver and increase its difficulty. So this is very, very cool because you can switch from, it has to be a basic maneuver, but it can be of the next higher speed. So if you did like a 3S loop, you can now do a 4 straight. It'll still have to be red, right? But that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, it can totally let you change the direction, change up a lot of stuff. You just have to go a little bit faster. It's almost like she's Captain Marvel here saying, higher, faster, further, baby. Yeah. Or just saying, did I stutter? Go faster. Get out of here. Basically, she's leading the evacuation saying, get out. Go, go, go. And, uh, yeah. She's kind of like a boss in this picture. Kind of digging it. Kind of digging it. All right. We've got GA-97. Another droid. Also granting you calculate with five charges here. Before placing forces you may spend up to th th from three to five charge if you do choose another friendly ship and assign it it's the resistance condition to it basically he's in the ship warp in so here's what happened start in reserve you, if you have this this token assigned so let's say we're gonna have poe dameron right we're gonna assign it to poe dameron let's just say to be thematic right like from episode seven again a lot of episode seven stuff in here of course this ship was featured in episode seven we didn't see it in episode eight when you deploy, you are placed within range 1 of any table edge and beyond range 3 of any enemy. So you can warp it behind them, here, here, you know, however you want. At the start of the round, if all of the friendly GA-97's charges are active, you must deploy. Then, remove this card. After the friendly GA-97 is destroyed, you, you must deploy. Then, gain one disarm token and remove this card. So basically... You can pick how many turns out. You can predict how many turns out you're going to want until you deploy. And if you survive, then you deploy as normal. If this guy gets deployed a little bit too soon, you have to deploy early and you can't shoot that first round because you're going to have the disarm token. So that's kind of cool. I think this is a fun card. I'm not sure just how great it is because you are, from a certain point of view, you're kind of broadcasting your intentions because you're telling them exactly which turn you're going to deploy. And at the same time... You know, you're also spending a couple of turns without a ship. Presumably a good ship, too. So that just means they can charge in very, very quickly for you. 
uh, and attack you with less risk because they don't have to worry about your big Poe, for example, firing back. So I'm not certain that this is like going to be a really competitive card, but it does sound like a very fun card. And that's cool. And I like the idea of fun cards. Also, it's cool to think about how this one will play in Epic because it could be in any board edge. And in Epic, you're going to have a lot more board edge because your board is going to be a lot bigger. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I am going to try to reply to as many as I can as long as they're uh, good ones like, you know, like especially stuff talking about nunchucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.